Hi, David. Hello. Nice to meet you. Now, would it be right in saying that Doctor Who was your first big TV break? Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. I had done uh, a small um, drama production for ITV called He Kills Coppers, but I, yeah, I mean, blink at it, you missed it kind of moment. Um, but uh, no, Doctor Who was, was absolutely the big, the big one. So there you are, young actor. You've got a good role in BBC flagship drama and a trip to Dubai. Yeah. How excited were you? Insanely. <laughs> and saying, obviously, you know, uh, the, the sort of the, the sort of secretive uh, nature of Doctor Who, I couldn't tell anyone. <laughs> so as soon as I found out, I was absolutely ecstatic. And I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. I can't tell anyone. I can't say anything. I can't, you know, because obviously, you know, they didn't want anything to get out that, to the press, who's casted, anything uh, for obvious reasons. So I just had to kind of go, OK. I mean, I told my parents, obviously, but that was about it. <laughs> but I was absolutely over the moon. It was, I mean, going and getting the train to Cardiff to go and do the, the script read with everyone sat around the table was just, even that, I was sort of pinching myself on the train there. Walking into that, that uh, script read through around the table must have been quite daunting, if not terrifying. Yes. Yeah, it was. It was hugely, hugely daunting. I mean, we started to figure out who was in it when, when we got there and people were getting picked up and taken to uh, the hotel where we were doing the reading stuff. Um, and absolutely, it was, I mean, it was just so exciting and um, a real thrill. And I mean, for me, you know, sort of being there and then Russell T Davies wandered in and came over and said, thank you for agreeing to do the show. And I was just like, thank me, thank, me. thank you, you know. Um, so that was huge, huge. It was just a, a really, lovely moment for a young actor to kind of go oh my god <laughs> this is like this is a real thing i'm doing this do you remember your first encounter with david tennant uh i mean i, I met him at the uh, script uh, read through and stuff and we sort of introduced but there was a room full of I it must have been about 60 people, 70 people, because everyone goes around and introduce the whole cast. We all sit there and then it's, you know, um, series producer, um, executive producer, writers, um, people from um, BBC uh, Worldwide, people from BBC. So it's just, you know, you, you feel a little bit swamped and you don't really want to be going up to anyone too much and saying anything. And, you know, it's all, it's all a little bit... You want to seem professional whilst you're quietly fangirling yourself. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so we mentioned um, Dubai. How mm. long were you there for? We were there for about a week. Um, we arrived uh, quite uh, late and you kind of walked out of the hotel. We got straight into like this big minibus just full of all of us. And then we headed out right into the desert and we had hired a, um, there was like a large, uh, like holiday complex almost sort of it, I mean it was quite bizarre it's sort of down some sort of you're looking around and you're like there's nothing here it's just desert then all of a sudden it's like a haven holiday park has just appeared <laughs> and there's lots of villas and a little pool in the middle and they've laid out food for us and it was quite incredible um and uh yeah I mean oh it was just yeah quite quite a surreal time um but so so beautiful so so beautiful it's a, a beautiful place to kind of go and see at some point, you know. I don't agree with everything Dubai has to say about people like me, but still. <laughs> yeah, interesting point. How, how did you feel about that? A little awkward, to be honest. I mean, I, obviously you can't tar an entire country by the laws um, that are being upheld by their particular government. Um, you know, otherwise we wouldn't have gay people in Russia or um, gay people specifically in Poland at the moment, there's quite some horrendous stuff going on. So, um, so yeah, I don't, I don't kind of tar the entire country with that brush, but it, it's, you know, it, it does make you a little uncomfortable. It does make you kind of very wary of whatever it is you're, you know, carrying in your suitcase or anything like that. You know, I, I think I had a copy of Gay Times or Attitude magazine or something like that in my in my, and like, I honestly had forgotten about it. And then I was like, oh God, and I suddenly sort of had a little like panic moment. I was like, what, 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 oh, ooh, you know, it's very, very strange in that, in that respect. You could have been carrying a copy of Doctor Who magazine, but no, 
you're taking gay times. Well, you know, <laughs> you're not here in bedroom. I was busy making Doctor Who magazine. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, I mean, yes, I should have been, I should have been, to be fair. I'm sure there were a few copies lying around while I was there. So, you know, I could have picked them up somewhere. So, obviously, beautiful location, as you said. But in reality, what are the practicalities of working in a desert environment? I gather there was an issue with sandstorms. We had a sandstorm one day and we literally, I think they had to scrap a lot of the footage that we had got that day. So we, um, it was so heavy and obviously we all have um, makeup on and me specifically, I had to be kind of digging the bus out. So I had different levels of sweatiness. Um, so I sort of had, you know, this is at the beginning, it's kind of mild sweat. And then there was like near the end, full on sweat. And in order to make it stay, um, a lot of people probably don't know or realize, Sweat is often sprayed on you by makeup and it's glycerin mixed with water. So it's, it's kind of ba basically like having droplets of Vaseline squirted over your face. So the droplets stay exactly where they are and they don't move. So you constantly look like you're perspiring, but it's just, it, it won't drip down your face. Um, so obviously having had that done, when the sandstorm kicked up and it just hit, my face, I, would, I just looked like I'd been coated in like a layer of render. You know, I looked like the, I looked like the side of a house. Um, so it was, <laughs> it was a little bit crazy. I mean, David's hair turned sort of a slight ginger shade. Um, you know, it was, it was just it was sort of trying to do any kind of sit and we're all doing that. Because there's so much sand flying around, we couldn't sit. So in the end, they were like, I think we're gonna have to call it a day today. And then, um, yeah, when they got back and they looked at the footage and they were checking through it all, they were like, it's not a lot that we can use. I think they used bits, but I don't think there was a great amount that we could have used for that from that day. But after that, it was it was fine. So uh, presumably, you had to remount everything the following day and, and redo it. Yeah, we had to try and cram everything else. And yeah, I mean, obviously, I think they gave they had contingency time. Um, you don't fly all the way to Dubai with a giant uh, double decker London bus waiting in the sand dunes just to try and rush through things. So I think they gave themselves enough time to be able to get all the shots that they needed and took into account what if something happened, what if something else happened. So, um, so yeah, so we, we, we definitely got everything with plenty of time. Well, as you just said, what else, what else if something else happened? But of course, famously, the bus didn't quite make it in one piece. No, it did not. No, it was, it was actually meant to be a fully functional bus. Uh, no, no dents or nicks on the side. And obviously uh, in transit, uh, <laughs> a sea container was dropped on it, <laughs> crushing the top deck, which is where I was. So I was, the only, I was the only character that happened to be upstairs on the bus, and that's why I come tumbling down after I'm like, nearly crushed to death. <laughs> so there you are, you've left Dubai, you're back in Cardiff. Bit of a contrast, you've gone from the expanse of an open desert to the confines yeah. of a small bus set. Um, you must have been relieved to get off that set in the end. I mean, it was a very busy, uh, sort of bizarre couple of months in so much as we kind of went through so many different um, sort of weathers and geographically, it was just, you know, one minute it was, it was very cold and wet in Cardiff. And then one night it billowed with snow and we didn't even know if we'd be able to get to the airport to go, go to Dubai because it was so cold. It was that freakishly, um, sort of cold February, March time in uh, 2009, early 2009. And, um, and then obviously we then had the heat in Dubai and the sandstorms. And it was, it was just sort of a continual sort of, I don't know, this, this, it was like the weather was on shop demonstration. It was going through every single thing it could do. It was just like, and here's sleet and here's snow. Now sunshine and now rain. And now you're in Cardiff, now you're in Dubai. Um, and obviously they can control it when, when we had the bus and it was in the TV studio, they could control all the weather with all the lights and everything else that they were doing. But there was a couple of nights where we were filming the night shoots as we were driving around the city of Cardiff and we're just going, you know, and there were some nights where it poured with rain, other nights it was fine, just a bit cold. So yeah, it was, it, it was crazy. It was really crazy. But then obviously we also film out of time. So there'll be certain, you, you don't, you don't begin with the beginning of what you're shooting. You sometimes shoot what's easiest to shoot then, and then you'll go off and do that. So sometimes you'll do episodes of things where you do the ending first. And you've got to, as an actor, then get into that mindset of going, okay, so I've gone through all that. 
I haven't acted it yet, but I've gone through that. Now I have to try and act like this, and, and it, that can be quite confusing. <laughs> this does sound like the, the cursed production of Doctor Who. It's going to end up with a reputation <laughs> like, like those, those rumours about the exorcist or poltergeist that it, it's cursed <laughs> somehow. I mean, thankfully no one died. Um, <laughs> no, I don't think anyone became haunted um, or possessed, but... Um, but no, I mean, it, there were a few sort of little bits and bobs like that, especially with possibly not getting to um, the airport in time to go and get to, uh, to Dubai. But um, I mean, it was just one of the most incredible sort of few weeks of my life. I just, I still look back on it now and I'm still in, very, um, in uh, touch with Victoria Alcock um, and we chat like loads and we still laugh about certain things that happened during that period of time we still regale friends of ours with stories from those few weeks of filming because it was just it's a little it was a little bubble and it was just it was incredible so once the production was, was complete and then it was broadcast um over easter did you sit and watch the broadcast with friends and family I, do you know what? I have no, I don't think I've ever watched it with family. I watched it with friends when it first was on and consequently I've seen it sort of several times um, around Easter time and stuff like that just when it happens to be on and I'll get a tweet or something from someone saying, oh, you're on the telly. Um, so yeah, no, I've watched it, but I have watched it a few times since and I, you know, it's, it just sort of brings back all the memories. Well, I'm going to conclude in a moment, but I'm just bringing this full circle. At the beginning, you were saying the secrecy that was involved with your casting in Doctor Who. And you said, well, of course, I told my parents. Which made me think, how on earth did you stop your mother from telling everyone? Because my mother would be the worst person to tell. I, uh, honestly, uh, <laughs> I'm assuming she didn't, because I did say to her, seriously, you, you cannot, you cannot. And I don't think she was quite as prolific as she is on things like Facebook and stuff now. Um, but, uh, you know, I think she probably told my nanny pegs as well. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but apart from that, it was all kind of kept quite stum until um, I sort of, I disappeared and started filming. And then, you know, obviously I had people going, um, where, where are you going? <laughs> I was like, mm, filming, I'm trying to kind of, you know, but yeah, I, I was able to then sort of tell a few people and say, look, I'm filming this, but I can't tell you anything about it, so. Well, thank you for telling me about it. And uh, <laughs> You're welcome. we'll chat again later. Indeed. Thank you very much. You're welcome.